welcome back everybody. So I've got a, well, I can't say old fashioned murder mystery because this one takes place in 2059, which is still a little bit in the future. But trust me, it's a good murder mystery. It is actually an author I've mentioned before. It's Origin and Death by J.D. Robb. Though, if you're a romance fan, you probably know her as Nora Roberts. Not my thing, but hey. It is what it is. I'm glad she does this series. The in-death ones are, they're always fun. It's a, you know, sometimes you can figure it out early on who's the guilty party and it's just a matter of how are we going to catch them. This one actually kept me on my toes and is definitely not your typical murder or, you know, anything. So if you're not familiar with the series, it's, Eve Dallas is our, you know, lieutenant in the New York Police Department, and she's married to Rourke, who is this, like, insanely rich Irish dude, and lives in his, well, we'd call it a house, but it's like two city blocks, so. It's just this huge castle maze for everyone to get lost in. And we start off, well, you kind of get an idea what it's going to be about, just, you know, the beginning is, you know, there's these, this little girl that's, you know, being taught all this stuff. And like, yeah, I'm really smart, apparently. But when daddy's not around, everyone else picks on me. And then, you know, the guy's all upset because he puts her down like a sick dog. And he's like, mm, yeah, there's gonna be some crap going on. Cause like, why are you constantly testing these little kids to see if they can speak, like, Mandarin and six other languages and all this other crap? And it turns out, you know, like, and we end up with this, like, world-renowned plastic surgeon, yeah, dead in his office. So, hmm, what the heck? Clearly this is going to tie in somehow. And we keep following the mystery and get some more deaths, and it's like, hmm, the saintly, you know, Nobel Prize winning plastic surgeon might not be the saint everyone, including the, you know, precinct shrink seems to think he is. And what's up with this daughter-in-law? Like, it's kind of creepy. It's like, oh yeah, I've been her legal guardian since she was six, and I married her off to my son, who, you know, duh, she would have been raised with, because that's not disturbing at all. And it comes even more disturbing when you realize that, yeah, they kind of grew up together, but grew up as him, like, way older than her. So it was kind of sister, kind of, like, helped raise her and still had two kids with her. There's some serious creep factor going on in this book. And it just gets creepier the further along we go. Is so you're going there? You know, the murderer did not try to hide their identity like at all. Just straight up. Yep, I walked in, killed him at his desk, and walked out five minutes later. Looked at the cameras. We know who did it, but they don't exist. There is no record of anybody anywhere in the world. Yeah, you know, nope. Those prints don't exist, that name doesn't exist, that, you know, how she got here is we don't know, because that passport does not exist that she supposedly used. So, it gets, you know, like, we know, who it is, we know who it is, but we don't know who it is. And we don't know how the heck we're going to find him. And the more we figure out about who it is, you know, and how all this ties in is, Oh my goodness, it gets so convoluted. Like, I think, yeah, I don't want to spoil the ending, but let's just say it is, yeah, normally when they catch the killer, they catch the killer, and they pay for it. This one, well, they get caught, but she isn't as happy about busting these folks as normal, and instead of, haha, I'm going to dance on your grave and rot you rot. <laughs> It's not the happy ending you expect when you realize everything that has happened. And 
you might notice some you know, sounds in the background that aren't normal. That's because zero shame. I am watching my NSYNC you know, concert DVD because sometimes you just need to be a 13-year-old crushing girl to have a good day. So, hi to all my fellow NSYNC fans. <laughs> I'm sure there's a, plenty of you still out there. So, yeah, <laughs> gotta do it a little bit different today. But, yep, so we've got, you know, the geneticist, the shrink, you know, all these gorgeous women and which, duh, they've got world-class plastic surgeon at their beck and call and a nice little finishing school all involved in some kind of murder scheme. And the killers aren't even shy about it. it. And then on top of all of this, Rourke decides to have all of his family over for Thanksgiving for the first time. And let's just say, neither of these two are really family oriented. Apparently, you know, facing relatives is even scarier than facing down a raving lunatic murderer. Which is proved by, you know, some baby crawling at Eve and her freak yelling, Oh my god, I'm about to be murdered by this drool-covered thing! What do I do? She's like, she does not do well with children, and it's hilarious, and I relate so much to that. <laughs> like, l l let me go face down some murders, I'll go shoot some bad guys. Don't hand me the kid! <laughs> and they end up with a house full of them, and she just thought it was gonna be adults. And lucky for her, not all of the kids showed up because they are struggling to host this Thanksgiving and can't go deal with the murder fast enough. But it's just, it is fun watching everyone, you know, almost do like 180s on their personalities because of all the intricacies of this case that are just mind-boggling. It is definitely a futuristic murder in this case and you're not gonna see the ending coming so if you really want a murder mystery that is going to keep you on your toes and surprise you for once even if you are a fan of this series definitely go check out origin and death and have a great weekend happy reading see you next time